we're going to get started and jump right in on this one. The first thing I need to do here is mix up a batch of cement. I'm using a fast setting cement and I'll link the product in the video description. I'm using a mix in bowl and I'm adding cement and water to the mix. I didn't measure off anything so I'm sort of freestyling as I go. The intention here is to make a bit more than I need this way I can throw the rest away and not have to add to it. Now I add some liquid cement color to make it a darker shade. It's a bit soupy but this is how I need it to be. I need to use two bowls. I'll be using a catering bowl for the outer side. For the second bowl, I'm using a bowl from the local dollar store which I'll apply oil to it as well. But this time the oil is being applied to the outside of the bowl. Now I'll pour off the cement into the black catering bowl. Next I'll take the second bowl, place it into the cement and put force on it to push it down. In this case I'll take a couple of weights and place it inside the bowl. Say I didn't have weights I'll substitute it for something heavy whether it's rocks or marbles or anything that I can put inside the bowl. Now I'll take tape and try to hold the bowl center inside the mix. Double check it and apply as much tape as needed. I gave it about 40 minutes then I removed the tape. At this point I wasn't sure what to expect. The goal was to separate the catering bowl from the cement bowl. In a perfect world I need this bowl to break but I would like to try and get it out of this without breaking it because I want to strategically break away some of the parts and sort of control the break. So what I want to do right now is go along the edge and pull it away and see if that would separate it somewhat. This bowl looks pretty darn good for what it is. If you wanted to stop right here, you could, but we're a long ways away from finishing. I wasn't sure how to approach this, so I put the concrete back into the bowl and now I want to strategically break sections off of this. It wasn't as easy as I was hoping for and I noticed it was getting cracks all over, which I'm perfectly fine with because it's a broken bowl project. Ideally, I was hoping that one side can just break off and I could just pull that out, clean this up and then move on. It wasn't going as smooth as I hoped. At this point, I feel like I like this. I, I like the way it looks and I think we're going to roll with this. I'm using the same bowl as I did previously. I've cleaned it up and now I'm applying a demolding wax on it. Now I'll mix up some casting resin and I've done resin projects in the past so I'm not going to go into all of the details for this video. I'm just going to breeze right through it. After I added the resin and the hardener, I've mixed it up for about five minutes. Then I added some pigment to it. This is where anyone can take their project as creative as they like where you can just mix colors and do whatever you want. To give you some perspective on timing, I'm about an hour and some change into this project. At this moment in time, I'm not sure what to expect. I pour the epoxy into the bowl, then I'll set the second bowl inside of it. By pressing down, I'll be able to see how high the epoxy will rise. Now I'll place the same amount of weight within the bowl with the remaining epoxy. I'll pour it along the side, then take the mixing stick and work it in. I should note that if I want the entire cement bowl to be cast within the epoxy, I'd likely wait 30 days before adding the epoxy to the bowl. But I'll explain why I'm doing what I'm doing as I'm going along so that you're on the same page with me. It's about 12 hours since I've made the pour of the epoxy. And one thing I know it's not in its hardest state. And the reason why I'm taking it out of the mold so early is because I want the concrete to be exposed. The more time I allow to go by, the harder the resin is gonna be. And this could make it even more difficult to pull away from the cement. Pulling the catering bowl off is quite difficult and that's because I didn't get the opportunity to apply the mold wax to the bowl. As I mentioned, the longer I wait, the harder the resin would get, which would also make it separate easier from this bowl.
this is the result I have with the bowl being removed from the mold. I can see some imperfection and I'll try to fix those as I go. I think the cement bowl looks good submerged inside the resin and I also think it looks good without the resin on it. Had I allowed enough time for the cement to cure and let the epoxy cure itself, I think this would have been even harder to remove. On top of that, I think there'll be a chance I'll be chipping off the cement. Now I don't know for sure because this is my first attempt and I think timing matters. I wasn't happy that I cracked the entire cement bowl, however, the resin filled those cracks and it made me feel much better. This part will be quite tedious, sanding and also using a razor blade to scrape off the resin. At this point, this is the biggest imperfection I've seen in this area. It looks like an air bubble that never made its way to the top. I mixed up a small batch of resin while trying to match it as close as possible. To try and fix this imperfection, I'll start by pouring some resin into the bowl. Now I'll take the previous inner bowl and place it on the inside. I was hoping this method would be able to fill that section in. Now that section is all filled in, you can still see where the imperfection was. While it's visible, it's on the inside so you cannot touch it. Now I'll clean up the lip of the bowl by placing it on a sheet of sandpaper. And I figured it would be easier if I could clamp the sandpaper down and prevent it from moving. This made it a little less challenging. As I was cleaning the bowl, I created a few scuff marks on the bowl. I didn't have much of a choice at this point, I needed to sand this down and polish it. Now a new coat of resin on this would have did the trick, but I didn't want to get resin on the cement. I went through a number of sandpaper here and I'll list them on the screen. An orbital sander would do a better job, but it seems that this bow has, you know, a bit of contour to it. It seemed like it would be better if I just did it by hand. Definitely not easier, but it worked. I started off sanding at 120 grit, and by the time I got to 400, I then switched over to wet sanding. By the time I got to 800 grit, I could no longer see any of the swirl marks. I continued sanding all the way to 7000. I'm kind of digging the matte look, but I'll use this as practice to see if I can polish the bowl and get it to a shiny state. I did order some polish online, but it didn't come in in time and I was getting a bit impatient. That's when I decided to try a different compound that was suitable for polishing plastic. While I was polishing this, the number one thing in my mind was keep this bowl steady, do not let it fly out of my hand. Well, this started off as an idea and I got a chance to experiment with this and I love the outcome and I really wanna try to experiment some more I like the two-tone look to it, showing the exposed cement and the epoxy on the other half. 